the Bombard Bombard J folks, but uh, more importantly, I'd like to introduce a man who doesn't need any introduction. So don't do it. Don't so do it. <laughs> anyway, my what name's is Ken Lewins, and I'm privileged to be your president. And as I walked up here today, I remember two years ago taking a tour of this workplace and then meeting the management folks. And this is what the management folks said. Good workforce, great future, great opportunities, going to be doing some hiring at that particular time and seeing the future was going to be great. So, I mean, it's kind of frustrating for me. So my message to you is this. First of all, I want to acknowledge Local 112 under Rowley's leadership for building the bonds of solidarity with other members. Obviously, the entire CAW from one end of the country knows you're out on strike. Obviously, we recognize this is the second week of the strike. In fact, today, I think, is the anniversary of the second week of the strike. And in these particular times, this is a fairly long strike already, believe it or not, in the CAW. Normally we would get a collective agreement either quicker than this or normally we would strategically make a decision to make the employer lock us out because of the bargaining power of the employer. But it's pretty simple to us, folks. Even though you face the anxieties, the frustrations of a strike, the recognition of when we get back to the bargaining table is unknown, but the simple facts is this. The employer has a great deal of confidence that they're going to break the will of the membership. The only time workers are forced to go out on strike today, and we were forced to go out on strike. Anybody at the bargaining table under any uh, situation would have had to reject that last collective agreement because it gutted the collective agreements of the past, and obviously it's full of concessions from removing COLA programs and things that we fought for for many years. So it come to a great surprise to us, to be honest with you, because we expect the employer to be tough, but we expect a minute before the deadline for them to withdraw their demands. That's the historic role of employers. But they're feeling confident. They're feeling confident that they could crush our membership today based on the incredible economic challenges and based on the confidence of employers all over the place where workers are making sacrifices. We don't have to make sacrifices here. This is not a workplace that's in bankruptcy. This is not a workplace that's teetering on whether they're going to be here next week or next month. This is a workplace that's comparing your collective agreement with other collective agreements and want to bring you down to the lowest denominator. So the message to all of you is, let's hope that we can get back to the bargaining table and get a resolve to this situation because contrary to what people believe, the union in terms of the leadership feels the anxieties, feels the stresses. Nobody wants to be on the picket line. We all prefer to be working where we have the security of a job and the security of income. But we have no choice but to be here. So I ask all of you to continue to support your bargaining committee, continue to support your union. We will continue to push and use every tool that we have in the toolbox to get the company's attention. Obviously, today is one of those particular tools and like we have affiliates from other unions here today, and again, I thank Tim and Bill and the other leadership of other local unions to be here, but if this prolongs to a long, uh, a long difficult situation, we will get more support from the union. We'll get more attention on this particular company. We early and I just talked, for example, in Windsor, where I come from, we just organized, and you should know this, we just organized a new North Star facility there. And our first collective agreement was difficult, but you know what we did? We went to the bargaining table with your contract, and we said to the employer, this is what we want a contract to look like. And we might have made 30, 40% of the improvements that you have in this workplace because you can't make it all at the same time. So I'm thinking out loud that the employer is saying, well, geez, if this North Star facility is the pinnacle of collective agreements, then we have to take on the workers that have that pinnacle of a collective agreement. And it's not a pinnacle of a collective agreement when they're making the money that they're making in that workplace. So I ask all of you to, again, respect the union, support the union. I know you will do that anyway, because it is really about your jobs, your security, and your income. And it's also about inspiring the next group of workers that are going to be taken on in the industrial manufacturing sector. So. Again, I want to thank all of you for your support. Uh, obviously, Local 112 is an incredibly respected local union in the, in the CAW. And whatever role he needs, whatever role Graham needs, he'll get the support of the National Union. So keep the faith, folks. I'm, I'm, and, and again, two weeks. Uh, you know, I am excited about a two-week strike because, again, we recognize 
that it puts a lot of stresses on families today. So I don't leave here today saying, boy, what a nice rally. You know, we got our people together. I leave here today saying we got the so total support of our membership and it's up to us to get all of the creative ideas to get the company back to the bargaining table to get an agreement. So thank you all very much for your time and effort. Hey. I'm warmer now than I was before. <laughs> so, so does anybody want to raise anything with me? How about all the stimulus money this company has received from our government and we're standing out here unemployed? Well, that's a very good question. You know what his question was? How about the, how about the stimulus money that's been provided to obviously keep people working, keep people spending, keeping the economy going? Well, if we had a government that was on our side, I would call them. But if I called the Stephen Harper government and said, listen, we got people on strike as a result of, of a, an, an employer that's really abusing the stimulus dollars, to tell you the truth, because the idea of stimulus dollars is to keep people working. Do you know what Stephen Harper would say? He would say, well, maybe you're just a little bit too greedy, because that's the attitude of the government today. Yeah. So the only thing message that we can send employers and governments alike, that when you attack the hard-fought gains of the past, the existing collective agreement, then you're going to have a fight back campaign. So, you know, we just got to keep defending the right to have a decent job, decent benefits and decent wages, even though there's lots of people today against our ability to make progress. You know, the reality is today, do you know what non-union workers are saying? Non-union workers are saying, hey, they should be lucky to have a job. What non-union workers ought to be saying is, I want to make the same wages and benefits as, as the North Star workers are fighting for. That's kind of a division in society today. So even without the strike, I'm lecturing you a little bit. Somehow we got to connect people's ability to everybody have a decent wage and a decent job because you know what happens? Those that don't say, Christ, what the hell are you out here fighting for? I'd love to have your job. So we got to change that mentality. It's going to take a long time. But that's why the strike is, a, is over. Believe me, these corporations believe they got more power today than they ever had in their lives and they're exercising that power in most workplaces. So we just got to keep the solidarity with each other. We've got some members here that I'm being told that have a couple years seniority, probably never ever faced a work stoppage. But the facts of the matter is there's work stoppages in the past that put in this collective agreement and we just got to fight like hell to keep it. That's a long winded answer, but when you raise Harper with me, I want to kiss you and fuck Harper. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody want to raise anything? And I say this with sincerity because every idea is a good idea. You know, the reality is, I know Roly and Graham and the bargaining committee will keep you folks up to date. Obviously, Don, our national staff rep, has a lot of experience. Jerry Dias has a great deal of experience in this kind of an industry. So there's a lot of people working to get the progress. But if people have any ideas that you have, bring them forward because it's going to take the collective action, it's going to take collective solidarity, it's going to take every suggestion to get the company back to the table. Even the plant manager, when he goes out of here, you know, it wouldn't hurt just to stop him, ask him to roll down his window and say, you know, your security, my friend, is as a result of getting us back to work. Because there's no security, not even for the management folks, when the folks, when the place isn't running. Uh, you know, the reality is you've got to manufacture, you've got to send product to your customers. So what we just talked about is when, when does the product, when is the customers really need our product? Because that's when the maximum pressure is. Does anybody know that today? When the customer will need our product that's not manufactured yet. Is it a couple weeks? Is it a couple months? Is it Christmas? Do we know? Where's Graham? The way this company's being run, can it be? As of no, yesterday, no, yesterday, no, yesterday. No, I'm just asking a question about. Yeah, yesterday. I'm just Where's asking a question on. Is there such a thing in this company with inventory with customers? Like, is no. there a stockpiling of parts no, no, that has no, kept no, no, other? No, no, no. Okay. The pressure is going to be at, at the Apache, right? Because the pressure is going to be Apache, and they they don't have anything finished. Every the protocol they calls. They got to do it in house. It's been like that for the they, last they six months. Us, they, no longer. they said to us, Kenny, at the bargaining table, that they've got five helicopters on ground, two of which have transmission, and they're hell bent on getting the other three into those helicopters. So I think that's where our bargaining power is going to be in terms of, you know, 
those deliveries of those those transmissions. And by the way, I don't know if Jerry or Dias said mentioned this to you folks, but the reality is we also have a relationship with the customers of this company. So we're talking to the customers about putting pressure on you know their their purchaser quite frankly to get this place up and running and that, that's exactly what you need we got lots of people behind the scenes you won't see it but lots of people behind the scenes trying to break the log jam here from from the customer base so we just got to keep doing it we just got to keep doing it but it, it's just with the pot. sooner or later we have yeah no no sooner or later sooner or later somebody's gonna say listen we took them on the fact of the matter is they're not weakening, and we need to get our customers uh, taken care of, or uh, or uh, all hell breaks loose, right? Just that's that's what that's what happens when you have a work stoppage. So I'm lecturing the converted here today, but sooner or later the pressure is going to be on them. It may not be today, because if it was today they'd be calling us, but it's going to come. The only question is when. So we just got to keep battling away. And this is a mature workforce. I mean, this is a mature local union. And I just want to continue to emphasize, because the employer always has somebody listening to us. Somewhere there's a mic here. We would prefer to be working. We would be prefer to be treating with respect and dignity in the workplace. We would prefer that North Star makes a lot of money on the backs of our labor. But we want to be treated decently in the workplace through a collective agreement. So when the employer has a spy here or somewhere along here, there's some kind of a, somebody's looking at us, folks, just the way it is. We prefer to get a collective agreement. Okay, that's great. But stay hugged up, man. It's never been warmer. Come on, hug up. Hug up for Christ's sake. Get in here a little closer. Get in here. Come on, for God's sake. For Christ's sake, people are shaking, but people are scared to hug. Hug up for God's sake. What about me? Oh. <laughs> you take 50% of my pension. Don't be missing my girl. Okay. okay. <laughs>